Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. At this point, we've pretty much got content going out every 24 to 48 hours. So don't stay stuck with your business. And if you need to reach out to us to get any uh, help with your business or you want to schedule a call, then you can do that as well. Description below this video, you can connect with either Ben or myself uh, through there. So wanted to come on here and create a new video. And I wanted to talk about eight reasons that guarantee success in sales. Now, a conversation I've been having over the last couple of weeks with a lot of the coaches that I speak to over these uh, 15, 20 minute calls that, that we do is very much sales uh, based and sales related. So I thought it'd be a good good idea to come on here and share with you guys eight reasons that will guarantee you success in sales. Now, these are eight things that we teach in our Accelerator program. These are eight things that when we work with coaches, either in a group environment or in a one-on-one -on -one environment, uh, we help them with. Okay, so what I would encourage you to do is grab a pen and paper, okay, make some notes on what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Because I can guarantee that some of the things I'm going to talk about today will help you with your sales game. Okay. Now, what you have to remember is that if you are a business owner, you're in sales. Okay? Essentially, you're in sales. But a lot of people hate that word sales because it has a bad reputation. But really and truly, in whatever you're, you're in, in life both personal and professional, it's it's kind of a sales game, right? On these videos, I'm selling you guys on the idea of changing or improving your business. Right? I, what I also do is I sell you guys on trying to get on a call with us. But the reason why I sell you guys on that is because I know that it's going to help you and it's going to really benefit, benefit you, right? Because I know the value of our program. I know the value that our company brings to coaches. I know the, the results that coaches that we've worked with, that they've got. Um, you know, if you were to go back to all the previous YouTube videos that we've created, we share interviews, we share testimonials, we share case studies of coaches that we have worked with, not just in soccer, but in multiple sports, from American football, from baseball. Uh, we've worked with coaches in tennis, basketball, right? We've, co we've worked with coaches in every single sport. So I know that what we have works, which is why I do my best to get in front of my audience and sell to people what we do what we have our service our product because i know that it works i know it helps people and i know it can change lives okay so here are eight reasons that will guarantee success in sales right so again if you are a business owner whichever sport you're in okay i specialize more with soccer coaches but really and truly this this works if you're in baseball basketball it doesn't really matter Whichever, whichever sport you're in, if you have a business, you are in sales, okay? So the first one is product and knowledge. So knowing your product to a T is going to help you with sales. Because when parents get on a call with you, when parents reach out to you and you get on a phone call with them, you have to know exactly what your product does, right? So what does your product do when a player or an athlete comes to you and they commit to your program for three, six or nine or 12 months? What's that? What's the transformation that you do and how do you transform that athlete that you're working with? Right. So product knowledge could be product or service knowledge is really, really important because when parents do get on that call with you, the, the better you are able to answer their questions, the more trust and the more they begin to 
feel more comfortable with what you are talking about. If you're someone that you'll get, you're getting on a call with a parent and you're like, but uh, yeah, uh, and you're stumbling across your words. And essentially that parent's going to think, do you know what? This, this person doesn't really know what, what they're doing. And they're just trying to sell me something without actually knowing the benefits of what they do. Okay. So if you don't already have your product down to a T, what does it do? What is the commitment? What's the requirement? What are the terms and conditions? And what is the process that the players have when they are with you for X amount of time? Second one, effective communication skills. So it kind of comes down to product knowledge, but effective communication skills is essentially being comfortable using different types of forms of communication. So if a parent reaches out to you via Instagram, DM, what is the best way for you to communicate with them? If a parent calls you on the phone, what's the best response or way to communicate? If a parent reaches out to you on Facebook, what's the best way you're communicating with them on Facebook, right? So effective communication is key to, first of all, getting people on a sales call with you because you've got to know how to respond, what to respond, and how to close that lead that, that has come through either your website, your social media platforms. How can we now close them into a sales call with you? And then when you're on the sales call, how can you communicate to them, right? Do you have a sales script? Do you have a process in place where you're you're closing them into an evaluation session? They come into your evaluation session and then what are the following steps? So being very eff effective with your, your communication is going to guarantee you success in the game of sales, especially in this industry where you've got to remember we are in a relationship building industry we aren't in soccer we aren't in basketball we're in a relationship business so the better you build relationships with people the more you will be able to sell your products and services now the third one is resilience and persistence and the best way to 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 sum that all up is pretty much follow up okay knowing how and knowing what to follow up with most of the times like when when you first start a business so when you first start a coaching business and you're trying to get clients you're probably going to have about 100 contacts with potential clients potential parents uh, players and the first 100 might all be no's okay now having done it myself and in 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 the biz in make money coaching sports we speak to a lot of coaches who you know we also get a lot of no's some coaches don't believe in what we do some coaches think we are you know we're we're a scam some coaches feel that you know it's it's impossible to reach 100k per year with their business so there's a lot of different things that happen uh, when we get on calls with coaches and it's the same way when you get, get on calls with parents, some parents might not like you. Some parents might not trust you. Some parents might not really know what you do. Some parents might not uh, might not understand what you do if you make it too complicated. So that's where it comes down to effective communication. But just being resilient and persistent means knowing how to follow up with these leads. Okay, I've got a rule that I go with and it's, you have to have at least four contacts. So what I try to do if I'm speaking to a coach, if I'm speaking to a parent, is I try to follow up at least four times with them until I can get an exact yes or no. And sometimes when parents say yes or no, it can mean different things. It might mean, yes, I'm interested, but I'm not interested in doing it now. I might be interested in doing next month. No, I can't afford it at the moment, but that no might be a yes, two, three, four, five months down the line, okay? So being just resilient and persistent and knowing that this is essentially a game. You've got to learn how to deal with setbacks. You've got to learn how to deal with rejection and try not to take it so personally because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's business, it's sales. And if you keep 
following up, if you keep being persistent, if you keep being resilient, then essentially after a hundred no's, you will get to that one yes. And someone will want to do business with you, but you've got to stay uh, consistent and persistent with it. Fourth one is customer focus. So this comes back down to when you get on a sales call with a potential prospect, a parent, right? Are you focused on that client or are you just focused on getting the sale, right? If your customer focused means that you're, you're listening, you're right, you're paying attention, you're making notes, you're asking the right questions, and you're actually focused on what the customer needs rather than on what you need, which is the sale. If you're just focused on closing clients just to make money, it might work in the short term, but in the long term, people will realize that that's all you want to do. And in the long term, your business won't last very long. So you've got to be very customer focused, figure out what they want, what they need, what is their child struggling with, and what solution can you solve for them? Fifth one, time management. So how you're spending your time. When you wake up in the morning, how, what are things that you, you are doing to improve your sales game in this industry? Are you learning? Are you going to, to, to seminars, webinars? Are you reading books? Are you learning off mentors? Uh, are you researching different sales techniques or tactics that you can implement into your, your business to improve your sales game? Okay. So how are you spending your time in order to push your business forward and to the next level? And again, it can be very time consuming, learning, developing, but if you're willing to, 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 to manage your time effectively, if you're willing to learn, to implement, then you will get the results and you will be successful in this industry. Okay, the sixth one, adaptability and continuous learning. It kind of comes down to what I already talked about, but being adaptable. And when I talk about being adaptable, it means, you know, putting yourself in front of different people. Some might be quite difficult, people to speak to others might be easier people to speak to but just being adaptable with different uh, types of clients prospects and parents okay some parents might want to have a conversation with you other parents might want to have a conversation but you know their their time limit on how much they want to spend with you might be restricted which means that you have to adapt your sales process to fit around the amount of time they set, they give you, right? Because you might call a parent up and say, and they might be, right, I've only got two minutes. Okay, right. How can I now uh, reshape my sales process, which normally takes five minutes? How can I trim it down to two minutes where instead of asking 10 questions, I'm asking three specific ones, getting the information I, I, I need, and then following up with them later on to try and close them into an evaluation session or a free trial session. Okay, the seven one, building and leveraging networks. So again, it comes down to going to network events, speaking with coaches in your local area, and just building connections, speaking to people. You know, it might be just people when you go to the grocery store, it might be parents who have kids just starting a random conversation with them. Oh, I can see you've got two kids that play soccer. Where do you guys play? I'm a coach. I'm looking to get into coaching or I have a coaching business. So just learning to speak with people and leveraging your, your network, right? Something I did when I first started was every afternoon, what I would do is I would simply just, go for a walk for an hour and any parent or any parent who had kids that I came across, I would start a conversation with them. So I would say to them, uh, Hey, Mrs. Jones, uh, my name is Leo. Uh, I can see you've got two, two kids here. Do they play sports or are they interested in playing sports? I'm a coach. I live in the local area. I'm starting up a, a an academy, uh, 
are your would your kids be interested in coming for a trial session and that's all i used to do monday to friday in the evenings just go out for a walk and any parent that i see ha that has kids i would just stop there and have a conversation now that is um something that a lot of coaches don't want to do because it gets you outside your comfort zone but at the end of the day what 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 happens is once you start doing it for so many times it just becomes a conversation and it's interesting because from doing that process sometimes there's parents who will will say to you oh do you know what we aren't interested at this moment but i know someone that will be interested if you give me your give me your number i can get, put you in contact with them okay or they might even give you their contact number or email address of one of their friends for you to get in contact. So there's a lot of ways you can do it, but you just have to put yourself out there and learn to build networks or leverage off other people. Now, the eighth one is setting and measuring goals. And it pretty much means just setting goals. It might be, right, today I want to speak to three new people. Or today, I want to send out 10 new DMs. Or today, I want to speak to 10 new people. Or today, I want to go into three, four, or five different schools in my local area and just hand out my business card. Right, so what goals are you setting per day, which is helping you to push your business forward? Now, a lot of coaches, what they do is they'll do this for, for a while and then they'll lose motivation because they see that things aren't working and then they'll stop. But I can guarantee you, if you stay consist consistent with it and sometimes being realistic as well, right? Setting realistic goals where you're, you're growing just a little bit each day. It doesn't have to be massive goals. It might just be speak to speak to three new people. Get, get yourself outside your comfort zone, right? So you might just go out like I used to do out for a walk and just speak to three random people. Do something that that, that gets you outside your comfort zone but just pushes you and improves you as a person, right? Sometimes it doesn't even have to be business related, just has to be something that might, you know, boost your motivation or your confidence in that moment of time where you're thinking to yourself, Do you know what, this isn't working, this isn't worth it, this is a waste of money, this is a waste of time, you know, I just want to quit, right? Find something that you enjoy doing, something that's that you're maybe passionate about or something that is very small, do that so that you can get back on the train and head in towards success, okay? Again, you need to connect with me, visit the description below. We can set up a call and we can teach you more about our Sports Accelerator program, which at this point we've got over 200 coaches in the program multiple sports, multiple countries, and getting great results. Okay, thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel.